Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome everybody to Watch Me Wednesday. Welcome in. Today you are going to see a beautiful trunk show. Hi everybody. How are you today? Um, as promised, I have a trunk show waiting for you on the bed. It's going to be kind of like an old-fashioned bed turning, but not quite because these quilts are not old-fashioned. If you are a Judy Niemeyer fan uh, and you follow me, you'll know and you may recognize some of these quilts that I've shown in the past. Um, and they are all the patterns um, are available on my website. Some may be in stock now, some may not be. Um, plus, I have lots of new patterns too you can look and the link is in the description so you'll be able to find that. So if you are looking forward to seeing some beautiful quilts, hit that share button and uh, let's see who's here today. Let's see who is here. Laura's here, Lisa's here, Betsy's here. Hi everybody, Deb's here. Uh, Tracy, hi Tracy, hi Kyra, hi Sue. Good to see you all. Um, at the end, if you have any questions, remember to type them in the comments and we'll put you up on screen, the comment up or the question up on screen so that everybody uh, can see what question you have and hopefully I'll be able to answer those for you. But in the meantime, we're going to start showing you some quilts. So hit that share button so that we can share this trunk show with other people that might be interested. And let's take a look at what I have. And I wanted to introduce to you, I have my daughter with me today. Come here, Adrian. <laughs> She's, she's going to be helping me hold up the quilts. This is my daughter, Adrienne. She's just here through tomorrow. And um, so I asked her if she would come in and help me hold up the quilts. So we're going to start showing you some. All right. So this first one on top is called um, Circling the Sun. This is a quilt that I designed for Judy Niemeyer's first book, uh, geese migrations. I don't believe I ha currently have it in stock and I'm not quite sure if she's got any more that I could even order in. But I wanted to show you this because it was kind of a unique um, publication that Judy had where she had asked all certified shops to uh, design our own quilt with certain uh, Judy elements in them. And this is what I designed and I did it all out of K facet. So let's walk it up a little farther so they can see. Um, so it's just basically two units. If you've uh, done the um, uh, cactus, uh, Arizona cactus table runner, the, uh, it's that unit and then the flying geese. So that's the first quilt. We'll just lay them down here for now. Second quilt, I've got two iterations of this one. This is the very first one I made. This is Desert Sky. And this is a 24 fat quarter, um, you can bring it back a little bit, 24 fat quarter quilt. It's a great beginner quilt because um, you're learning how to do curves and it's the same unit over and over and over again. But 24 fat quarters to create this quilt. Um, and this is the, fir the first one that I did and I did it kind of in... Um, berry colors, if you will. Then it was redone and Lisa, who is here, Lisa Slinsky, did this version for me in my feline fine fabric collection, which was a few collections back. But if, as you can see, it's done in a whole different color way um, with my feline fine fabrics. And I'm sorry about the lighting in here. I was trying to get the lighting right, but I have this transome window up there where I cannot cover it. So there's this indirect lighting that's coming in that's just not real great. So sorry about the lighting. But anyway, this is the same exact quilt done as, no, yeah, that's not gonna help. <laughs> I had set up another studio light in here, but it's not working very well to ward off the glare. But um, this is the uh, Feline Fine, same quilt, just different fabric. So I have a few of them in here like that so that you can kind of get an idea of what these quilts would look like done up in a different way. This one, Lisa also did for me um, in my current collection that is, the fabric is still available on my site, uh, just came in. This is my Blinded by Science 
collection and this is Judy's Christmas Celebration Tree Skirt. Now you can see I don't have a hole cut in the middle because she could use it as a table top or two or you can hang it on the wall. But also I should have mentioned um, at the top of the trunk show that if you see any um, quilts that you like, write the pattern name down so that you have it for further reference or future reference when you go back to my site to take a look um, to see if they're in stock. If it's not in stock, you just click on the notify me button and as soon as it gets back in stock, we'll shoot you an email automatically notifying you that that pattern is in stock. If you want it soon, you can email me with the name of that pattern and I can get it for you. But anyway, this was done in my um, Blinded by Science fabrics. We did it in the purples and the turquoise in that collection. And it's a great quilt. I love it. I would probably use it if I had a round table. I'd probably use it on that. This quilt actually has two iterations here too. This is the very first one that I did. It's uh, Judy's Feathered Star. And I did it all in K-Facet fabrics. So um, I did the green backgrounds. I just love this colorway. I combined it with um, batiks too. So there are um, K-Facet prints and batiks in this quilt, which um, are just, I think they really complement each other really well. But this is the Feathered Star. It's, you can see it's not, it's not that large, so it's a great wall quilt if you're looking for a wall quilt or even a lap size quilt. Um, but uh, I, this is the very first one that I made and I'm just in love with the colorway on this one. Second one that was made, we did it for my Ancient Etchings fabric collection, which I still believe I have some in the, sh in the shop, in the online shop. Lisa made this one for me before uh, market, we had to create this. This is actually on the cover of the um, pattern right now, but this is also the Feathered Star, and it is just done up in a rainbow colorway. And I think, um, you know, seeing the first one and then seeing the second one, you can see how um, just changing the colors makes it look so different. And um, depending on what you're looking to uh, create, and make, I mean, you can really, the, the sky's the limit. I also should mention, let's just put this one down for a second, let our arms rest. Um, I also should mention a lot of the quilts that I'm gonna show you, some of them are older, but some of them are newer. A lot of the quilts that I'm gonna show you, I did do the colorways up in Quiltster. So if you've never used Quiltster, it's a great way to mock up your quilt, especially a Judy quilt, before you even make it. So you can mock it up in whatever fabrics you want, whatever colorway you want, and you can see what that quilt will look like before you even start sewing on it or cutting that fabric. And it will also tell you exactly how much fabric that you need to create it. So if you wanna load up your own fabric in there, fabric from your stash, you can load it up into Quilster, use fabric from your stash, and it will tell you if you have enough. So that, for instance, the um, Desert Sky Quilt, the Feathered Star Quilt, the Christmas Celebration Tree Skirt, all of those uh, we did, I, I mocked them up in Quilster first with my fabric collections so that I could uh, swap out fabrics and see which I liked best before we actually cut into that fabric and, and created the quilt. So it's a great way to see it before you make it. So, and it's cool. And if you want to make it again, then you just redo it in Quilster. Okay, so this, this next one is huge and you, you're getting a great view from it now. This is a queen size. This is the queen size feathered star. Um, I did this one all out of batiks. I don't know how high we're going to be able to lift this one, Adrienne, but, oof. So this is the queen size feathered star that I made when I was um, at a retreat up in Montana with Judy. I did it all in batiks uh, and I absolutely love it. I used black batik for the background and I quilted it all. Uh, I also used a black batting by the way because 
Um, I didn't want uh, the white batting to pill through. Uh, so I used black batting and I also used black thread here uh, on the black background, but I used different color threads on the feathers and on the uh, border. So this is the queen size feathered star. So if you like the small one, but you want to make a bigger one, this is a great version to make. But you can also make that smaller one in a, you could put borders on it to make it larger as well. Um, let's see here. All right, this next one I absolutely love. This was done with my Feline Fine Fabric Collection. This is the Dragon Star, which I absolutely love. I mocked this up in Quiltster and then uh, created this with all my Feline Fine Fabric. And the funny thing is that, you know, when you look at this quilt, it doesn't scream kitty cats, but there is kitty cat kind of fabric in here. But I just love how it, um, all the colors kind of go together really nicely and the design of this particular pattern I just love. I love that border with the spikes and the flying geese. It's just a great pattern. And it's also another nice wall size quilt. Remember, if you have questions, hold them to the end and we'll take a look at them when, I, uh, when we're done. All right. This one, I also have two iterations of this one as well. This is my uh, first one, my first vintage uh, star, or vintage compass, I should say. And actually, there's still a pin in here. Almost got stuck. But this one I did out of batiks and some prints. So I absolutely love this because it's kind of got that black and white splash of color vibe that I adore. Uh, it's another great... Um, wall size quilt and this one really actually goes together pretty quickly it goes together in four quarters and it's pretty easy to uh, put together so if you're looking for something that you can do fairly quickly once you've cut it this is a great one and it's a great size and you can see about how big that is so that's the first one and I also used a really cool striped um, let's see if you can see that the striped uh, binding on that isn't that cool and that's my print that I used. And the back is a cool print too, isn't it? Did you get stuck by a pin yeah. too? Oh. Sorry. We should probably take these pins out of here. And put it up there. I don't know why there's pins in the back. This one is the second vintage compass. And my, my friend and... Wonderful, wonderful helper, Lisa Slinsky, created this one for me. I mocked it up in Quiltster with my Mandala Magic fabric that is available on my site. And let's bring this a little closer so that they can see the quilting. I hope you can see this. The lighting in here is just not great right now. But this is from my uh, Mandala Magic fabric collection. But you can see how different the two quilts look. Um, in two different color palettes. Again, this went together really quickly and you could do some awesome quilting. My friend Margaret Solomon Gunn did the quilting for me on this particular quilt and I just adore it. But again, the same quilt looks totally different. This one here we did in the My Blinded by Science fabric collection. Let's hold it right here. The light looks better there. So this one is Summer Solstice and I used a mocked again, mocked it up again in Quiltster and I pulled in more of the pinks from my um, Blinded by Science collection when I was playing with it in Quiltster and this goes together super easy because Judy took the Y seams out of this quilt. So when you get this pattern, there's no more Y seams here in this Lone Star. So it goes together a lot easier. So if you are if you are kind of put off by trying to do a Y seam, now you can do it without even having to worry about that. So this is a great one. This is called Summer Solstice. This one is one of my favorites. I had mocked this up in Quilster a long, long time before I had 
my hair, hold it right here because the light seems to be better. I had um, mocked this up in Quilster a long, long time before I actually had my Ancient Etchings fabric collection. I mocked, mocked it up in a rainbow colorway. And then um, when I designed and colored my Ancient Etchings co uh, fabric collection, I knew we had to do this. This is Prickly Pine Cones uh, done in my um, Ancient Etchings. And let's see, where's the, there it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it is considered a tree skirt, but of course, I didn't cut a hole in it again. Um, but I love the rainbow version of it. Uh, and I don't have a second iteration. And Lisa did piece this one for me as well. This one was when I had my fresh Pickens fabric collection. This is tarnished windmill. And this also goes together super easy because Judy took the Y seam out of this as well. So it goes together super, super easy. I loved piecing this together. Uh, for some reason, I just thought this was a super quick one to do. Um, and I'm not sure why, if I, I don't know if I was in some kind of groove that day or those couple days, because it took me more than a few days to do it. But I loved putting this one together. It does have a pieced border in it. You don't have to do a piece border. I did, um, but used my entire uh, Fresh Pickens collection for this particular quilt. And I just love the way the Tarnished Windmill has these like fan blades instead of spikes. I think it adds a different element than the, the spikes you generally see in a Judy Niemeyer quilt. Now the next two quilts were done with my Ancient Etchings collection. And what I had done with my Ancient Etchings collection was created really a cool and a warm palette. So this is Raindrops. And we did two versions of this, one in the warm palette and one in the cool palette. Um, I believe Lisa did the warm palette, I think. I can't remember. I don't know if it's, I, I put it in the label, I'm sure. Is it in the label on that side? Designed by Quiltworks, pieced and quilted by Jackie. Okay, so I did the warm version. <laughs> And then Lisa did the cool version. So this is the warm version. And again, I mocked these up in Quilster so that I could see what the warm version would look like and what the cool version would look like. And I love them equally as much. Um, and of course you could have done a rainbow version with all the colors, but I thought it was kind of neat to show how you could split up a collection and do it in warm and cool. And this one is Raindrops. And this is the cool version, which Lisa pieced together. Here, let's keep it back a little bit so they can see it better. There we go. And this is the cool version. The same exact quilt, totally different look, just because of the fabric change out in the um, pattern. And, you know, and I don't know which one I like better. I don't know that I have one that I like better, but... Um, some people might be more attracted to these cool and jewel tones than the uh, warm tones. So it gives you options and it gives you ideas. So now we're getting down to the techniques of the month quilts. So this quilt here, this is going to be a tough one to hold. We'll probably hold it like halfway here, Adrian. So this one is called the Vintage Rose. So... Uh, this one I created using batiks. This is all batiks, but I wanted a rainbow kind of quilt using blacks, whites, and colors. So you've got that still black and white and splash of color in here. Uh, and it's a big one. It's a queen size, this one. Uh, it, I'm not going to lie. It took a long time to make this one. I started it up uh, at my uh, recertification retreat in Montana, but it's a technique of the month. All, you can only purchase patterns, <coughs> excuse me, you can only purchase the patterns from a certified shop or take a class with a certified instructor or a certified shop. So that is one of the things about the techniques of the month um, that you will note if you, they're only available through us. 
So that's one of the techniques of the month. I don't have them all out here, but um, I have a few of them. So you get to see them. <coughs> Excuse me. I got a, dry, a little bit of a dry throat. This quilt here was the very, very first technique of the month that um, Judy had. And it's Glacier Star. And it's probably, this one is the queen size because it has uh, this border on it. If you can see, it goes from, the border goes from here to here. So it's like four corners, four big setting triangles. It's probably still one of my most favorite techniques of the month to teach. I think you learn a lot of, of cool stuff in this. And it's probably one of the easiest ones to um, piece together out of all the techniques of the month. Not as much dramatic impact, uh, if you want if you will, as some of the other ones, but it's a great one nonetheless. You got that Lone Star, you've got the spikes, you've got wandering and flying geese. Um, so you've got all kinds of stuff. And you've got, um, you've got your um, Y seams. Sorry, I had a brain lapse there. So that's Glacier Star. Okay, this next one is called Paradise in Bloom. And this one has applique on it. This is the wall size quilt. And when she designed this one, I thought, oh my gosh, now I gotta do applique. I'm not, I'll be honest with you, I, up until this point, I was never really a big applique person, but um, I actually enjoyed doing this. And now since then, I've, I've done lots of other applique, but you've got your basket setter applique, and your bird of paradise in here that's applique. So it gives you some great new skills that you can use. Uh, and, and it's a fun one to put together. Now this again is, this is the wall size. So there is a queen size that's much bigger. So that means there's gonna be more applique. So if, there, if you've wanted to learn applique, it's a great one to try uh, because you still have all that great paper piecing but you have that extra added element of applique. All right, and the last quilt here coming up. So this one has got to be one of my favorite techniques of months. We could just lay this one back down when we're done. Um, this one is the Dinner Plate Dahlia, and this one is done in my Feline, here, back it up, my Feline Fine fabric collection. We use the pinks and the grays and whites to create this uh, quilt. And the fun thing is that this was on the, is on the cover of the pattern. So this one is the wall size, but I've got something special to tell all of you. So a lot of you have enjoyed my Feline Fine Fabric Collection. And guess what? I have now in stock on my website, this kit in my Feline Fine Fabric Collection. It is available if you've been wanting to make this colorway, this wall size uh, quilt in my Feline Fine Fabric Collection, you can do it. But I have a limited amount. I don't have a lot. I put them up on the site today. So all you need to do is go to my site and look under what's new and you will see it there or just put in, um, Dinner Plate Dahlia fabric uh, uh, quilt kit, and it'll pop up. But this one is one of my favorites. I just love it. So let me see if anybody's got any questions. Let me come on over to the computer real quick and see if you've got questions. I got to step over the quilts here. All right, so let's see. Using <laughs> Leslie, you're funny. Yes, we're using your bedroom. This is, this is the bedroom Adrian's actually staying in while while she's here. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Let me scroll back a little bit and see. I wish I had a place online for step-by-step -step on it. Um, so, okay, here's Robin. Let me just put that up. Robin says, wish they had a place online for step-by-step -step on it. There's lots of tutorials out there. In fact, um, I have a couple online classes, Robin, um, that teach you the paper piecing technique. Uh, so you can check that out on my website. And um, Judy also has some tutorials on her uh, YouTube. I will be, I will let you know that I will be filming a, a class um, 
on a, a Judy Niemeyer technique so at some point this year. So we'll be doing another one. So there are places you can find, you can go on YouTube and, and find that out. Let's see um, if we got any other questions up here. Type in your questions if you have any. Oh, Julie. Hi, Julie from Green Valley. Yes, I know where you live, Julie. It's funny. Um, let's see. Oh, we got lots of people in. Let's see. Okay. Oh, I missed the whole show. You have to watch it. So, <laughs> Cheryl, you missed it. That's okay. You can watch the replay. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Where can you find out how Judy puts them together without a Y seam? Well, that's in the pattern um, because she kind of splits it down the middle so it becomes a seam that you're going to join together. Um, so when you get the pattern, the technique is in there, Patty, um, if that makes any sense to you. She, she engineered it so the block is split so there is no Y seam, if that makes sense. It'll make more sense to you if you um, have the pattern and you get those instructions on the pattern, if that helps any. Um, looking forward to seeing a new, awesome. I'm looking forward to doing the new class. Um, my, my partner in crime, Lisa, and I have been working on uh, an exclusive quilt to bring to you and film. So hopefully, hopefully this year we'll be doing that. Uh, let's see, Laura says, can you have a class on Judy's pattern? Yes, that's what I am, we're doing, Laura. Uh, Lisa and I are, we've got it in the works. She's my right-hand lady, and um, we're hoping to get that accomplished this year. We've been working on it since last year, and, you know, things get in the way. Uh, so, we're, we're, it's, it's coming, it's coming. And by the way, I hope you're feeling well. Um, any other questions? Let's see. Awesome, Maureen. Woohoo! Yes, <laughs> we're working on it. We're trying. And even even though even though my husband's retired, he's making me still work. Isn't that funny? <laughs> oh, and guess what? Today is today is my dad's 88th birthday. Um, he is 88 years young, and we're going to be celebrating tonight. I made a nice big dinner, a lasagna, and a beautiful cake. So. <laughs> Like, yes, Lisa said, Lisa's so funny. So Lisa, I said, things get in the way. She says, yes, like moving and pandemics and such. Exactly, things get in the way. <laughs> um, yeah, Laura, exactly. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're hopefully going to be getting that to you this sometime this year. More than likely, uh, the class will be, once we film it, I still got to do the editing. So it'll be towards the end of the year for that. Um, Thank you for birthday wishes for my dad. Anyway, so if you don't have any other questions, I'm going to, I don't want to step on my quilts. So I probably should take my shoes off so I can step on them so I could be in the camera range here. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for coming in. Oh, it looks like Sue's got a question. I have several of Judy patterns that have Y seams. Would love, would, okay, here on. Sue says, I have several old patterns that have Y seams. Would, would I be able to figure out how to make them without Y seams? Well, probably not, only because there needs to be a seam allowance. And in the old patterns, um, she did not split the block. So you can't, you'd have to, you'd have, in order to make it so that you have a non Y seam, you'd have to be able to split that block, then add seam allowances on both sides. So unless, you can accurately do that. You're not going to be able to, to do that. Um, you might be able to contact them and ask them if they have those papers for the new one and maybe just pay per paper because you already have the pattern. Um, I'm not sure if they'll do that or not, Sue, but you can, it doesn't hurt to check. The worst they could do is say no. Um, let's see. My dad will be 90 on the 15th. We love our dads, don't we? Yes, we do. My, son, my son's got a birthday coming up next Wednesday on the 14th, too, but he's not going to be 88. Um, but happy birthday to your dad, Linda. Uh, let's see. Can you give us a hint on what pattern? No. <laughs> Lisa, Laura, Laura, can you give us a hint on what pattern you and Lisa have in the future? No. No, we can't. <laughs> All I can tell you is that it's an exclusive 
So you're going to see it here and only here. And that's it. That's all I can tell you. You're funny, Laura. <laughs> um, let's see. Deb says the same thing. No, Deb. <laughs> um, awesome, Patty. Your mom's going to be 95 this year. My husband's mother is going to be 95 as well. August 1st, we're going to be celebrating my mother-in-law's uh, 95th birthday. So it's, that's awesome. Happy birthday to your mom. That's great. Uh, no, no booing me, Laura. No booing. <laughs> anyway, well, listen, thank you all for coming in and watching this trunk show. Again, if you saw a pattern that you liked, just head to my website and um, check it out. See if it's there. If it's not, remember, if uh, one, uh, hit the notify me button. Once it's in stock, you'll be notified and you will be shipped that pattern. Otherwise, um, you might find another pattern that you're interested in as well. So I really appreciate you stopping in, taking time to see all the quilts today. Uh, I will be back, remember, in two weeks because I'm doing every other week now. Since my husband's retired, I'm going to be spending a little time with him during the day doing some things that we like to do, like hiking. So I will not be here next week, but I will the following week. And until then, thank you all. Love you all. And happy quilting. Get some great sewing time in over the next couple weeks. See you guys. Bye-bye.